Hi, welcome to Six Gun Guitars Luthier Lessons video series. Um, in this one we are going to talk about the curfing jig. Um, this is a little jig that's used on a slide in the miter slot of the bandsaw. So that way you can slide it in and out with a piece of curfing blank in front of it. And it'll slot even curfing all the way along whatever length of strip that you desire. Um, it's just made out of a couple of pieces of wood. All this stuff can be found around the shop. And a couple of screws that put it together. And we'll bring you in on a little bit of close-up here on the bench so that way you can see what it looks like and how to put one together. Alright, here's the Kirkman jig and a little bit more of a close-up. The main piece that's used for this is the one down here. This is the slider. This piece has to be cut to the same width that, these, that the notch in your bandsaw is going to be for the little miter attachment. So what you're going to do is put a piece in there and keep trimming it until it's just wide enough that it doesn't wiggle from side to side, but it still slides through fairly freely. Um, most miters actually wiggle a lot more than this thing should. So when you put in your miter and you feel the way that it wiggles, if that's going to be a little bit too much just because you don't want to mess up where you're putting the slots um, on the perfect. So make this guy first. I um, mean, my instructions on the website, there is a, instructions in the article section. I initially said to make this the right width and then plane it so that way it's the same height as the deck. And the reason for that is then it makes it so you can attach this, this work board here directly to the top of it without having to do anything else. Now when I did mine, that was a little bit of an afterthought, so I had to recess it in here. So that way, because this board was a little too tall, so I had to recess this one on there so it ran flat. It would be much easier just to make this board flat with the top surface of the bandsaw, dabble, bandsaw table and then put this one on side, on the top. So the next step is to take a little cross member here and make it pretty long because it's going to have to support the big long curfing strip as it runs through. Put this guy on here and make sure that it's at an absolute 90 degree angle to this one because that's how we're going to get absolutely straight cuts in the curfing blank. Now this piece right here, I only designed it to run one piece of curfing through. And that got pretty old pretty fast, just because it's only running one piece through and it takes forever to do it because you're doing 70, 80 cuts on these things to get them through. Um, and I only do, you know, 20 inch or so pieces, so I mean they could be a lot longer and a lot many more cuts than that if you're, if you're doing something else. So what I did was I attached this other little piece to the front here. And what this does is it raises the amount of space I've got here a little bit, so that way I can actually take two strips and press them up against here as I'm running it through the bandsaw. So you get double the action for the same amount of effort. And when you're making curfing strips, I'm telling you, it is going to get boring. So definitely want to make it so that way either you have an attachment like this, or if you follow the instructions of the website, this board back here just needs to be at least this tall and 90 degrees to the slider board. So let's head over to the bandsaw, and I'll put a blank on here and explain how it's done. Alright, so we're all set up with the curfing jig, and again, the way that it works is your long slider piece goes into the deck here, and what it does is it allows freedom of movement all the way back and forth here, but doesn't really go side to side very much at all. It might only make a couple little clicks, but it's, it's barely a motion. Now what you want to do, let me grab a clamp here, what you want to do is set your depth on this, so that way the saw gets as close to your piece up here as possible without actually touching it because the whole point of curfing is we want to saw almost all the way through it and not completely through it. So I'm going to take a look here and make sure that it's set up the way I want it to. Okay, so once we get this in here close enough to the depth that we want to cut to, which again is about as close to the end as possible without actually going through it, take a clamp and put it over here at the end of the slider bar and you want to make sure that's adjusted right, okay. Put it to the end of the slider bar and clamp it down nice and firm so that way it only lets us go in as far as this stop is. And that will ensure that you get an even cut every time without having to sit here and guess. So, you take your curfing blank, um, which I will put instructions for on the article, and slide it in here so that way it comes up to our first mark. Uh, I've got my marks at a quarter inch so that way it's very easy to remember where you got to slide the piece to. And then we'll turn on the saw and we'll cut a few curves here. Now, as 
you can see, this cut is going to be a little bit too deep because these are falling off here. And that's one of the things that's a little bit of trial and error with this setup is you have to set it up so that way it's not going to cut all the way through. So what I'm going to do is just back this up just a hair and cut a few more to make sure that it's at the right depth this time. Side stop. Now that's looking a little bit nicer. These are bending the way that I want them to. So what I would do in the next sense is keep on moving through this piece and just keep on going through so that way when it comes out the other side it's curved all the way down. And again there's a tiny little slot clearance notch in here so that way this will slide in and out very easily. Um, once you make your first couple it's going to make that notch for you. Um, you will want to widen that notch out just a little bit so that way the saw doesn't rub up against the side of it or anything. Those kind of things can dull your blade. The next thing I'm going to show you really quickly here, and I'll grab another piece of kerfing, is how you run two of them through here on this same setup. The reason that I put this bigger piece on here, and again, just make a taller cross member and you won't have to do that. The reason I put a bigger piece on here is so that way I could take two of these blanks, put them back to back, and then run them through here just like this. And a great way to make sure these stay together is before you put them in, flip it up, and put a piece of tape, just masking tape, along the seam back here so that way you don't have to worry about pushing them both at the same time because it's kind of a pain in the butt. But for demonstration purposes here, you put both of them on and soft it. you just keep going through that exact same motion over and over again until you get through both of these blanks and you'll have two sets of kerfing for the same time expenditure as one. And as long as you take your time with it and move it to the mark and go real nice and slow, it'll be nice and even kerfing. And again, you can make this stuff in any size. These blanks are a little bit taller than I normally use. Um, I run them through and take a little bit off of them again. Um, I have a little, little different strategy for making blanks now. Um, and again, that's covered in the article section of the website, www.sixgunguitars.com. And there's also instructions for this in the article section on the website as well. So between the video, the article, and some of the pictures that are on there, I think it'd be pretty easy for you to all set up a nice little kerfing jig. Where right in the shop, you can make all your own kerfing. And again, you can make it out of any material that you want. I normally make it out of mahogany. And you'll be all set to go with that.